Day three at Crufts 2024, Super Saturday, uh, as it's known. It's extremely busy out in the halls. Um, and lots and lots of people going to visit lots and lots of stands, including Pets as Therapy, the organisation that uses pets uh, as therapy dogs in lots of different situations. Uh, Stephen Wibbley, Chief Executive, lovely to see you here. Thank you, Steve. Um, I guess you've been busy on your stand at this show. We certainly have been busy. We've had a great time over the past couple of days. We've had our own volunteers with their dogs on the stand and met hundreds and hundreds of people who want to come along, talk about our work. So it's been great to help raise awareness of the work our charity does. We've been able to talk to our supporters and most importantly, we've had lots of people come to us who are interested in volunteering with us. They think their dogs would make great pet dogs, pets and therapy dogs. So they've come along and signed up as prospective volunteers, which is amazing. Now, I know I've already spoken to some of your people this year because you've got this fantastic initiative in prisons. That's right. Um, 35 prisons where you've got dogs yep. going in. That's that's absolutely amazing. But the, the majority of, of everything else that you do involves schools and care homes and universities and, and things like that. Tell me, how big is the scale of your work, Stephen? Well, we work right across the UK in all four countries of the UK with around four thousand volunteers taking their dogs and a small number of cats as well into as you say Steve uh, hospitals care homes schools and lots of other settings I was talking to someone who went to dementia day care center a school for children with special needs those type of things and really it can be any establishment like that that feels they've got um, whether it's residents or visitors or patients or pupils who might benefit from a couple of hours a week spent time with a gorgeous dog. Mm. Now, I mean, can any dog do this? Uh, or does it have to be lap dog? The ones that certainly lap dog. Can you take an Irish wolfhound, shall we say? Well, we have everything from chihuahuas to Great Danes on our books. And importantly, lots and lots of crossbreeds, lots of rescue dogs as well. But it's, So it doesn't matter about the breed. It's about the temperament and the health of the dog. So it's not about the breed, but we do assess the temperament of all the dogs to check they're suitable. And presumably, with no disrespect to the owners, the temperament of the owners as well. Uh, yes. there, there is training, I guess. <laughs> there is temperament of the owners. <laughs> and, and, and having gone out now with lots of volunteers, mm. our volunteers are great at having those chats, making that small talk, making people feel calm. But the dog facilitates that. It's about the dog. But it also, particularly with older people in a care home and hospital, opens up really interesting chats about pets they might have had in the past. Perhaps they've gone to a care home, had to give up their pet. Might be a long time ago, there was one chap I'd met who'd had 20 guide dogs boarding in his home over 50 years. So amazing stories that our volunteers love having those conversations. But fundamentally, it's all about the dogs. Mm. I guess sometimes it's, it's difficult to assess the impact, isn't it? Until you actually go and see the effect yeah that taking a dog into, say, a, a care home yeah. can have on somebody. You, you must get a great deal of pleasure from seeing that. Oh, amazing. And I'm quite new in post, so the most important thing for the first couple of months in the job is going out with our amazing volunteers and their dogs into those different settings, their care homes, the schools, the hospitals, and just seeing the difference it makes there, seeing the people who've been in hospital for you know, weeks or months, actually it breaks up their day because it's boring being in hospital. It uh, encourages them to move if they haven't moved much, and to talk if they haven't taught much. And similarly in schools, I was visiting a school in South West London, and there were some children who'd never stroked a dog before, and they came wow. and met our volunteer with the dog and stroked and helped groom the dog, which in terms of just your day-to-day -day life is so important. It means they're far less likely to be scared around dogs. Mm. But the point about the difference it makes is so important. It could be lovely, but what's the benefit? And there's good research that shows it really does help people. So in schools, it can help lower children's stress levels. It helps their reading. It helps people that are anxious. It's such an important way of supporting people, different way of supporting people in what can be quite difficult circumstances. Now, Pets as Therapy is a charity. That's right. um, and the end result is that you provide this service for free. And wherever there is something free, there is great demand. So how big is the demand for what Pets as Therapy is providing? Yes. You're right, there's always demand. There's always organisations, schools, hospitals, care homes who want us and can't, we just can't find the right volunteer at that particular time. And I think it's something like 2,000 organisations waiting for visits across the whole of the UK. So part of the reason we're here and one thing we talk about all the time is that need for more volunteers and of course more money. We are a charity. Um, 
And there's far, far more organisations who'd like a dog and a volunteer, and we're working really hard to increase our numbers of volunteers so we can do more and more great things. Two points you made there, money and time. Uh, let's deal with the money bit first. Yeah. Uh, how can people donate to Pets as Therapy? So the easiest way of donating to Pets as Therapy is going onto our website, petsastherapy.org, and donating there, and whether it's a one-off amount or a regular giving, regular giving is really good. People, if, they, if they'd like, can leave money in their, in their will as well, a gift in will. And we have lots of dog lovers who want to leave something behind. They'll look after their family in their will, and a little bit left over, they might leave to us. But it makes a huge difference. We've got people that work for companies, and the company might be doing an employee vote on a charity of the year, and they'll put the pets of therapy through. Money from all different sources, but we always need more. And always remind people to gift aid it. And certainly gift Critical aid bits every donation. We get an extra 20% from the government. So we've, we've covered off the money aspect, yeah. which is good. Um, the time so, bit. Now, you've mentioned the website all, yeah. already, but I suspect that's the first port of call for anybody yeah. who thinks they might wish to volunteer. With certainly, you. if someone wants to volunteer with us, have a look on the website. There's some more information. There's information about the assessment, so you can check your dog will be suitable. Is that a difficult... Do you have to test? Do you have to do a test or something? It's not a test. It's, a, <laughs> it's an hour or so with one of our experienced assessors, checking that the dog's suitable, checking they're not pulling too much on the lead, jumping up, barking, biting. They're good at being handled, because that's the whole point, handling and stroking the dog. So, and rarely do dogs fail. What might happen is there might be a dog, particularly a young one, might jump up a little bit. And we'll talk to the owner about, actually, it's jumping up. This is some hints and tips come back in a few months time so it's nothing to worry about the assessment and there's information about that on the website there's information about other criteria age criteria on the website and then people sign up to be a volunteer and we'll take them through the process there excellent now you mentioned just finally that you're relatively new in post That's right uh, pets is therapy have you got a dog I do have a dog. I've got an elderly boy, an old golden retriever called Mulligan, who's gorgeous and has just turned 13. 13. 13. He's so a little bit old and wobbly to be a pack dog. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's a lovely dog. He is. Stephen, fantastic to catch up with you. Um, um, amazing work uh, that Pets as Therapy and all the volunteers uh, do. Uh, give them all our very best regards. But lovely to see you here at Crafts. Lovely. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you.